Good morning once again from beautiful northern Wyoming. Astro's um, foot that he, my dog, he, his pad, he sliced it about a little over a week ago, I think it was. And it's healing up, but it's definitely not completely healed. So I'm going to be very, very limited on where and how much I run him. So um, I'm going to have to get a little bit lucky to find some game this morning. I did bring some pigeons just in case I don't find anything. We're gonna, I got, I already checked the wind here, it's my back. So I'm gonna drive to the end of this run, run this short bit here, and then go down, if I don't find anything, go down up on the, the hill, another little hot spot, and um, run a bit there. And if I don't find anything, um, just toss the pigeons. On my way through here, to get downwind, I'll keep my eyes peeled just in case I spot anything or see any tracks, or something I can pinpoint, but. I was just going down here to get the wind right for the dog. GPS says he's not moving off to my left. I can't see him. I'm going to stand up on the truck to see if I can. He must be just over the ridge out of my sight. Well, in the essence of saving dog power and not running him too far. I'm going to go ahead and start getting the bird ready. And if he's still not moving by GPS, I'll go ahead and fly it, take a pigeon along just to be safe. Still not moving, so it looks good.
Oh, damn it. Two grouse. They must have busted. Clyde wasn't on the wing yet. I'll bet that's all I got. Yeah, he's gonna chase, but that's hopeless. I don't know why they busted. I was being quiet. Just took too long, I guess. Shows Astro's not moving. It could be more. Clyde is still moving. Looks like he's turning coming back. Slides on his way back with some height. There he is. Let's go find the dog. Let's see if there's, oh, there's a dog's running. There's nothing left. Well, we had a slip, just couldn't make it work. I will toss him a pigeon. He's not going to chase it at all. Huh. <coughs> well, I'll walk out here and see if we'll get going again. And if he does and goes up, I'll toss him another pigeon. If not, we'll just stoop the lure. But good boy, Astro. You pointed those grouse. Don't know what happened. I don't suspect. Astro bro point and flush him. He's never done that before, even when he's a little pup. <coughs> Clyde's not the speediest about getting his ass going and up in the air. Which if he was, would be better. But he never has been his whole life. It's a nice morning, it's about 20 degrees. Just a light wind, sunny. I like hawking when the temperature is below 32, because I hate mud. And when the temperature is below freezing, there's no mud. You gonna get going again, Clyde? It's got a bit of that spring laziness going on. Well, counting today, we've got 10 more days of the hawking season. And then we're done. Goes to the end of February here in Wyoming. He's not gonna go up, he's gonna land. Help! Help! Wanted to pull out the lure before he actually landed, but he's gonna go land on the truck. Yep. Spring laziness. 
and Clyde's habit of loving the land that he's always had his whole life. And a few unfortunate, I guess, accidents. Flushes while he was sitting and stuff early on kind of cemented that behavior more so. Unintentionally, of course. That's one of the things about falconries. It's a lot of things you can control and a lot you can't. A lot of times, last month or so of the season, I've got to cut birds weight back a little bit. Because the longer days, sometimes warmer days, get them in the, the lazy mood. Got to cut them back just a touch to get them more, have a sense of urgency. So I might need to do that with Clyde. I always weigh out very carefully my bird's rations every day. And instead of adjusting his ration to feed him a little less today, to cut him back a little, I'll just stoop him a little bit longer. Burn up more calories, still feed him the same amount, works good. <laughs> little icy He's tired, he's got his beak hanging open. Nice. The two tracks people have been driving have ice in them. We got a half inch or so of fresh snow last night. And that sitting on top of them made them kind of slick. How's the paw, Astro? See you licking it. Yeah, I guess I'll quit. Whoa! Before I kill myself. Astro, come here. Let me see your foot. Yeah, it's just got that spot that's still got a piece missing, but it didn't seem to do it any harm when he ran today. So it's no worse than when it started.
Come on, Astro. Time to get back in the truck. Save on your foot. When I was here a few weeks ago, I've been here since and didn't find anything, blue pigeons, but this one time relatively recently I was here, I found two sharp tail grouse, very same, similar situation, same at similar spot, probably the same two birds. So it's one of those that get late in the season, about mixed emotions about killing game. I wanted to breed for next year, have Lots of babies so I can hunt them next year. And these that have survived into February have a good chance that they're going to make it long enough to make babies. It's been a, a lean year for kills though. I have to go back to my logs and add it up, but I bet Clyde doesn't even have two dozen kills in the entire season, which is easily the worst he's ever done. And it's all because I wasn't hawking ducks. Most of my kills are usually ducks. I'd say probably at least two thirds, maybe three fourths of my kills are ducks. Because they're just definitely not as challenging to catch as upland. And I like being able to mix it up. Have a string of no kills. You know, three or four flights in a row with no kills in upland. Go kill a duck quick. Get his confidence levels back up. Get some satisfaction for him and me both. Obviously this time of year I would not be hunting ducks, the season's closed, but it goes up till first week of January, give or take. And um, I've got a, a warm water spring set up that I can hawk all the way through that cold weather. It's amazing. There'd be hundreds of ducks there every morning. I hit that a lot through the month of December. It's no good until it freezes up elsewhere, before that you want open ponds, I'm just hawking ponds and doing the normal routine and that's good too one thing about hawking ponds is you go out to a place with some ponds and you can run the dog a little bit on some hot spots trying to find some up game, upland game and if they don't pan out you just fly a duck slip if it's there it just gives you a lot more options Ducks over Clyde, well, unless they're on big water, but um, small ponds for ducks, he catches way too easy. He, um, I probably could literally fly him off the fist and catch ducks. He could just fly him down. I don't do that. I try to get him to wait on, and he does, just never at any spectacular pitch. I wish I had some better big water setups because that'd be a lot of fun with him. I've got one that's not huge, but it's a pond that's, oh, depending on how full it is, between um, 7 to 10 acres. But it's built up a bunch of cattails around the edges. So it's gotten real hard to flush. Because when you get down by the water's edge, they can't see you, the ducks. So you got to be up the hill a little ways from them when you're flushing. And so you're farther away. If there's a lot of ducks on it, like more than 50, it works. But if there's only a dozen or so, it doesn't work. So I haven't been flying that as much lately. Obviously not at all this year. Oh, I'm careful, there's ice here too. I don't wanna, dang sure I don't wanna slip with the bird on my fist and fall, hurt him and me both. Now, let's see what we got here. Turn on the 
bird, not the dog. Okay, he was 240 feet when he came back after chasing those grouse off for my pigeon toss. 3.4 miles. That'll burn a little bit of calories. Not a lot. You gotta burn a lot. You gotta get him up to over four or five total miles. All of which is, you know, chasing, just lazy waiting on. It doesn't burn as much. It burns some, but. Oh, yeah, Mr. Pigeon. But I never used my second one. Go home. Oh, we found game, that was good. Didn't make the slip work. That was, I guess, mostly my fault. Should have been more prompt getting Clyde out and getting him in the air. I prefer to let him go in his own time and not bump him because um, he tends to go up better when that happens. Sometimes when I bump him, he just goes and lands again and it turns into a game of leapfrog, which is annoying. But um, if I'd have got him up a little quicker, pinned him, it would have held and we'd have had a good flight. But that's okay. I enjoy seeing game, even if I don't really get a chance of catching it. And on the plus side, we didn't run Astro very far, so I think his foot will still be in good shape. Try and baby that along, get the next nine days of hawking in. And I'll have to work parts of that, but I get at least five or six days of hawking, I would think, out of it. Hopefully. Before the season's over, so I hate to quit, having fun. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It'll help out. Maybe YouTube can send me a little money for gas.